On the borders where the Western Ghats meet the plains lay the famous Nagarhole National Park, which was rechristened as Rajiv Gandhi National Park in 1992. It covers an area of 642 kilometers and is one of the most important wildlife refuges in the country. Spread across Kodagu and Mysore district, the national park derives its name from the meandering stream Nagarahole, a tributary of the river Kabini. There are three subdivisions to Nagarhole which are Virajpet, Hunsur and HD Kote along with eight range forests. The boundary of the national park is around 226 kilometers. In this, about 45 kilometers is the boundary of the backwaters comprising of Tharaka and Kabini. 15 kilometers is the boundary with Kerala state, 10 with other forests, 70 with the surrounding Kodagu coffee estates and 85 kilometers with other villages. There are about 125 villages in and around the national park. The rich vertebrate fauna of Nagarahole National Park is due to its ecological variations from dry deciduous forests in the eastern region of the national park to the tropical moist deciduous forests in the western part of the national park. Nagarhole National Park is well known for tigers and elephants. The high densities of large carnivores in Nagarhole National Park are attributed to the presence of healthy populations of large herbivores. Tigers are about 75 to 80 in an area of 643 square kilometers. Breeding tigresses require 800 to 1000 square kilometers area for good breeding practice. But in spite of this limitation, breeding has been quite good due to an abundance of prey animals like gaur, sambar, cheetal, etc. Over 330 species of AV fauna has been recorded in the national park. In Nagarwala National Park, our tiger population has increased. Now we can, uh, last year we estimated up to 86 animals in this area. It occupies almost 8 square kilometer, one tiger for 8 square kilometer. So population is going up, but uh, there is no problem for prey-predator relationship. We have got surplus uh, 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 prey population inside the national park, they will be stationed at. But uh, because of this uh, increase in population, infighting will be there. We are losing a lot of animals uh, when the new recruits are entered to the forest area. Infighting will be there, the older one will be defeated and it will be dying. So we are recording this type of uh, incidents now and then. As our uh, tiger population is increased, uh, this man animal conflict is also increasing and even in our safari everybody is enjoying by sighting the tigers initially it is very difficult to sight a tiger because their uh, uh, adaptation that is uh, area that is earlier we have got 16 square kilometer one animal now it is almost reduced to 50 percent it is uh, one animal for eight square kilometer uh, it is a opportunity to get uh, uh, animal sighting very frequently so still because of that uh, increase in population uh, infighting is also there and spilling over the old animal, injured animal or uh, diseased animal to the uh, human habitation and they will be attacking the soft target like uh, human being and uh, cattle and also goats and sheep. Human wildlife conflict refers to the interaction between wild animals and people and the resultant negative impact on people or their resources or wild animals or their habitat. The conflict takes many forms ranging from loss of life or injury to humans and animals both wild and domesticated. Conflict between man and elephant has increased over the years. The main cause is a shrinking habitat and loss of the traditional migratory routes 
taken by elephant herds. The causes are as human population expands into wild animal habitats, natural wildlife territory is displaced. Reduction in the availability of natural prey or food leads to wild animals seeking alternate sources. The elephants, uh, they, are, uh, they live in the heads. So the head will be leaded or led by a female, so oldest female elephant. And there will be uh, the, el the mother elephants and also the other female elephants take care of the calf in rearing the calf and all. And the elephants usually out of 1400 elephants, as I said, there are only problems due to 80 to 100 uh, elephants. But for other nearly 1200 to 1300 elephants, there is good food in the national park. They have got very good abundance of grass species, which is palatable by the elephants. So, for, uh, so due to this aspect, so we are having a very good habitat for the better survival of the elephant in, the, in this migrate range, especially in Nagarode uh, National Park. The coffee estate and villages have been a source of conflict between man and animals. This is a challenge to the forest department of Nagarode. The migratory range of elephants extends from Mudumalai to Bandipur and from Nagarhole to Wayanad in Kerala. This is especially so in the months of October to January. The park has around 1,400 elephants out of which 80 to 100 are rogue elephants which cause crop damage and human injuries and even deaths. These rogue elephants collect at a particular place called as Kandi. In that one or two or five to ten and sometimes even 15 come out to forage the crop grow. They return in the morning at 3 or 4 a.m. To identify these Kandis, officials in anti-depression camps headed by a guard, three to four watchers, all patrol the whole night. To address this elephant menace, the forest authorities have taken several measures like digging elephant-proof trenches all along the boundary of National Park, pillars, solar fencing and railway barricades, which is a recent one after drawing an example from African forest authorities who have successfully implemented this strategy. Nagarwale National Park is part of Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. In this area, almost 8,000 of wild elephants are existing. In Nagarwala alone, we have got 1.6 uh, uh, animals per square kilometer. That is 1.6 elephants per square kilometer. It is the highest density. So far, we are facing a lot of man-animal conflict in this area. Earlier, we are adopted a few methods to prevent the man-animal conflict. Initially, we dug up the elephant probe trench by measuring uh, 2 meter, 1.5 meter and 75 centimeter in the bottom. Later we switched over to 3 meter width and 3 meter depth and uh, 1 meter in the bottom. Still we are facing a lot of problem. Then we switched over to this uh, solar fencing. Uh, even though we have completed uh, all along our fringe of the forest, that is not effect uh, when compared to EPT and other methods. And uh, maintenance cost is too high in case of solar. If it is cloudy weather, uh, sometimes uh, battery will not be charging and power will not be there. Some, so, elephant will make use of this opportunity and they will cross away to the farmer's field. So, while searching, we came to know that in Africa, that to be in Adao National Park, they have erected this railway used uh, uh, railway lines as a barricade to prevent the elephant from passing from forest area to private land. Based on that, we also thought that uh, if you go for this uh, railway fencing, we can prevent the uh, elephant depredation to human habitation. The present government has sanctioned 50 crores out of the 212 crores for erecting barricades using scrap railway lines. 
These are availed from the railways at a cost of rupees 36,000 per ton. To erect a one kilometer stretch, 150 tons is required. Every 10 feet apart, a vertical pole is erected. In the last six months, 2.5 kilometers of barricading has been completed and the rest will be taken up in a phased manner. It cannot be stolen as the screws are riveted and jammed. Every vertical pole is 10 feet in length. Three feet of the pole is below the ground which is concretized with 20 mm diameter anchoring bars which makes the foundation super strong and even three or four elephants cannot push the barricades. So last year our Honorable Chief Minister has sanctioned and uh, announced this uh, railway barricade project for 212 crores. After that, he has released 50 crores for all the uh, elephant inhabited area. In Nagarole, we have received around 10 crores and we deposited the entire amount to the railway authorities. Railway authorities, they are supplying the railway lines which are almost scrap and they are using this uh, uh, scrap for a uh, melting purpose. So we approached them and we requested and they have agreed upon and per ton they are charging 36,000 rupees. In between these two vertical poles, we have kept 10 feet distance and the horizontally first row will be placed at 90 centimeter and another is in the top at the seventh feet. Uh, even we have tested, even by using our domesticated elephant, we try to push this fence, but it is not falling. Even three, four elephants come and push it, they will not fall because three feet ground uh, revetment will be there by using concrete. We are completely packed that uh, uh, ground level so that uh, it will not fall. In wherever this slushy area and uh, other area comes, we will put um, even uh, uh, deep deeper than this uh, three feet so that it will not fell down by elephant force. From past uh, six months, we have completed nearly 2.4 kilometer length and so far no elephant have crossed over this area. So we, it is proved that elephant will not cross over wherever this elephant railway barricade is there. So uh, in future, we wanted to cover up entire area in phased manner as the railway lines are available to us. Uh, by installation of this uh, railway barricade, our crop compensation has come down and earlier whatever the anti-depredation watcher we are maintaining in this part of this uh, railway fencing, we are not having that uh, squad now. So that is savings for us and it will be long lasting, uh, it, nobody can steal it because when we are uh, erecting this one, we are making a holes with nut and bolt and that will be jammed so that nobody can remove that one and nobody can steal also. So even if in case of solar fencing, we are losing a lot of material, sometimes panels and battery, here nobody can steal the material. So it is useful uh, as elephant is concerned. If you want to prevent the wild boar and uh, herbivores, we have to make a chain link mess. It should be welded. In second uh, stage, we can go for the chain link mesh welding also. That will prevent the wild boar and as well as the herbivores. They cannot cross over the area. The forest department, with the active cooperation of staff and villagers, has been able to reduce the number of villages affected by elephant menace from 68 villages in 2013 to 45 in August 2015. Compensation in 2011-12 was around 85 lakhs and was reduced to 36 lakhs by the year 2014, which is a 50% reduction in expenses. This data clearly shows that the forest authorities have taken the right steps with the active involvement of the people in the surrounding villages in bringing down the conflict between man and elephant. 
there are four major threats we are facing in these parks, uh, namely forest fire, grazing, poaching and also the firewood collection by the tribal peoples who are residing in the forest area. Uh, so to curb these uh, threats, we are taking up protection activities, which includes we have got around 27 uh, anti-poaching camps located at strategic sensitive points inside the national park. Then uh, the uh, field patrolling is taken up by through food patrolling, vehicle patrolling, boat patrolling, river areas and also monsoon patrolling during the monsoon season. STPF means the Special Tiger Protection Force is deployed on sensitive locations uh, and during emergency situations these STPFs are used for to control the mob and also for other, other pur purposes. Periodic surveillance inside and outside the tiger reserve is taken up and also the anti-snare drive along the border or along the this ring roads is taken up to curb this poaching activities. Uh, we have got around 1795 kilometers of fire lines will be erected during the summer season uh, and control burning will also be taken up to control forest fire and uh, around 40 uh, fire watchers will be engaged in each ranges during the summer season to control the forest fire and to if any uh, fire fire is found to control that forest fire these fire forest fire watchers will be used. Then so we have uh, erected solar fencing, elephant proof trench around the park to mitigate the human animal conflict. Adopting modern technology has become the role model for rest of the wildlife conservation. New innovative technologies are emerging to combat the conflicts between man and animals and in the near future we should be able to resolve these problems completely. Nagar Hole enjoys the reputation of being one of the best managed national parks in India. It has successfully protected the interest and habitat of elephants and tigers which are critically endangered species along with the other animals. It is in our interest to safeguard and protect our ecosystem of which animals are an integral part.